Hello, everyone. My name is Mauricio Velasco, and I'm part of Splunk's Thread Research Team. In this short video, I'm going to be talking about the content and or the detections that we worked on as part of our November release, specifically the Active Directory Lateral Movement Analytic Story. In this session, we're also going to be going over a demo where I'm going to simulate some of these lateral movement techniques and show how we can detect them with the content that we are releasing. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Um, first, let's talk about lateral movement. Um, what is it? Well, lateral movement are the techniques that adversaries use to control remote systems in a network. Let's think about how breaches happen. Um, when a breach happens, attackers usually obtain an initial foothold through maybe a misconfigured server, a vulnerable service, a weak password, a phishing attack, right? And once they obtain that initial foothold, once they're controlling that first endpoint, it's really unlikely that they're going to be able to find their objectives in that first host, right? So they're going to need to expand their access and explore the network by moving laterally until they find what they're looking for, which could be a database server, an email server, a file server, et cetera, right? So since lateral movement is often a necessary step in a breach, uh, we think it's really important for cyber defenders to deploy detection coverage uh, for it. Um, there's many ways of moving laterally in an Active Directory network, but the content that we wrote focuses on abusing native administrator Windows services. This is a common way attackers use to move laterally once they have obtained administrative credentials. So services or features like the service control manager, the task scheduler, WMI, WinRM, et cetera, they can, they're all legitimate features that attackers can interact with through the network to achieve code execution on remote endpoints. So, so that's gonna be the focus of our detections. Um, now, if we analyze some of the open source in threat intelligence uh, that we have available, we can learn how attackers are moving laterally in the wild, right? For example, Nobelium, the actor who carried out what has been named the most sophisticated nation state cyber attack, they abuse the task scheduler using SCH tasks. They also abuse WMI using PowerShell to execute or try to execute code remotely as we can see on these reports. The Rio ransomware, they've known to leverage WMIC to again, leverage WMI to execute code remotely. Conti ransomware group, they use PSXEC to move laterally, a legitimate administrative tool, right? So um, let's start, well, first let's, that's why, you know, knowing that after actors are leveraging these techniques, we wrote the Active Directory Lateral Movement Analytics Story. This current update uh, introduced five, 25 new detections and five modified detections. Uh, and we focused on these data sources, process and command line logging, partial script logging, as well as the Windows security event log. Okay. All right, so let's start with the demo. Um, so in this demo, uh, we're gonna use um, attacker tools or simulation tools like Impacket, Metasploit, PropleSharp. And we're going to simulate these techniques in a lab environment will be built with the attack range. And we're gonna be detecting this lateral movement um, attacks using Splunk. All right, so let's move into our demo. So we have a, a, an attack range where we're gonna infect uh, one server, a Windows server, and then we're going to move laterally to the domain controller from this server. Okay. For this, uh, we're going to be using uh, Metasploit, and we all already have Metasploit listener uh, listening here. There's no active sessions, and then we're just going to infect this computer, assuming compromise. You know, we don't know how this attacker got in, but they got in and they have access. So now with this endpoint, with this endpoint, we're gonna move laterally from here to the domain controller. Again, assuming that the attacker has already uh, obtained credentials. So the first way that we're gonna move laterally is 
by using uh, Metasploit's implementation of PSXEC, which is pretty similar to the PSXEC uh, binary from Sys internal. So we're gonna configure this. I'm not gonna go over the details what we're configuring here, but we're gonna use PSXEC against the domain controller, which is IP14, um, okay? All right, so we're going to, oh, one important thing is Metasploit has different ways of executing PSXEC. In this case, we're gonna uh, run the most the most common way, which involves uploading a service binary. So we're gonna run this, and Metasploit, you know, got us. This worked, and now we are running code in the domain controller. So we've moved laterally, right, using Metasploit's PSXEC. So if we look at the logs and try to see what happened here. I have a dashboard already created. Um, we can see something interesting. This we can. The way PSXEC works is they write a binary, a service binary in an administrative share and Metasploit's implementation does that similar. So we can detect um, binaries being written using this detection and we can actually see where it came from um, and the user that it was used to create this service binary, right? So that's one way of detecting it. Another way is of course, using PSXEC on similar tools will create a Windows service. In this case, we see that this service was created the service name, and also it has a high entropy because, you know, as you can see, Metasploit creates a random service. Now let's do something slightly different now. So we're going to use a different way of this technique. In this, we're going to avoid um, dropping a binary to disk. So we're going to try to bypass that, that detection that I just showed you. And in this case, we're just going to use execute a PowerShell one-liner to get our remote shell. So we run this and this works. Now we have another session. Um, and now we, we see, look at, remember this detection that didn't trigger, now we refresh, it should trigger. And we will see here that services.exe spawned cmd.exe, which spawned PowerShell. And this is a partial one-liner that injects the Metasploit shell code into memory, which is how I got that extra shell. So that's the first demo and we're able to detect both, both uh, ways. So let's move on. And in this, um, this demo, we're going to um, leverage this endpoint and set up a SOX proxy so we can run a tool from our command and control server uh, through the SOX proxy into the target network. So I'm just gonna set up a SOX proxy here using Metasploit. And now we're gonna back up um, to our Kali Linux, and then we're gonna execute this. So we're gonna use the in packet library, specifically the uh, atexec.py, which um, abuses the service, uh, task scheduler through proxy chains. So we're gonna do that, execute, and we're gonna execute the ipconfig command. So as you can see, this worked. Uh, and if we go back to our second dashboard, we see, we see this. So we see we, that we are able to detect the in packet command line parameters running ipconfig. Um, and we also see that a new scheduled task was created with a random name. In this case, this is the entropy, the Shannon entropy for this um, task name. Okay, so another way of detecting it. So finally, we're going to uh, run a few more techniques, but in this case, we're not going to use Metasploit anymore. We're going to use Purple Sharp, which is a simulation and, and emulation automation tool. So we're going to use um, we're gonna simulate five or six techniques in an automate, on an automated way. Things like SEH tasks, SC, um, PowerShell and WMI, PowerShell and WMIC, WinRM, et cetera. So just in an automated way to make things faster. Um, so we're gonna confirm with purple service here, and then just gonna run those five or six techniques. Um, so I'm gonna put this video on hold so we don't have to wait for this to finish. Okay, so now we know that the uh, purple job has finished. And as we can see, it executed a bunch of techniques using the command line like SCH task to create a scheduled task, SC, 
WMIC, et cetera, PowerShell. And let's look at those, uh, uh, the detections that were triggered um, by running this. And this should start populating with all the hits that we're gonna get on these detections. Um, let's see, yep. So for example, SC was used to create a service. Uh, SC was used to start a service. SCH task to create a scheduled task. Um, yeah, we run the scheduled task. In this case, we're using WMIC that Rio malware, malware does. Now we're using PowerShell like Nobelium did, and we're using invoke command to abuse WinRAM, right? So all of them caught by our detections. So that was it uh, for this short video. I uh, appreciate the audience. And uh, yeah, that's my name and reach out if you have any questions. So yeah, you guys have um, great end of the year. Have a good, have a good one, bye.